Okay, boys, we are back once again with another Game Theory FNAF reaction. This one actually crept up on me. I did not realize just how soon this new <laughs> this new theory would come out. Then again, he did say next week. Honestly, it really does not feel like it's been that long since the last reaction. I think it's only been a couple of days, but here we are with part two. Let's not waste any more time at the beginning of this, and let's just hop straight into it. So, Game Theory FNAF. The Faceless Puppet Master. Here we go. What do we got? Also, I'm sick right now, boys, so if I sound like I'm dying, it's because I am actually dying. Okay, is this Matt drawing right here? Man, look at that stiff arm as he draws Freddy. What's going on? I mean, it's not a bad drawing, to be honest. Alright. Sure. Pretty, pretty good opening, I like that. It's kinda loud. <laughs> that was good. Oh, here we go. Still have not read <laughs> into the pit. Bombshell where we visit what is chronologically the earliest Freddy Fazbear 1985. A location that we have Good never theory, that last visited one. before in any of this series canon, but one that we know to have existed somewhere in the background since the release of FNAF 2. With six murders set in 1985, it makes it very likely hmm. that this was the mystery location. I wonder if, had, if Matt has had time to think about this more because he said that he had to think about it. So I wonder if he'll return to it. Out there and like entered the stitch raid over here. Scott throws out ideas and I'm just digging through his dumpster hoping to cobble it all together into a workable body theory thing. Whatever. Has that silly children's workable body theory. Years ago. Some of the biggest oh, I don't have it here right now. In the unlikeliest of places. Yeah, I do have um Golden Freddy's name in this children's workbook word search. I don't have that book. Fantastic. It's it's back back Actually, there behind the green screen. <laughs> Do it. That said, I will not forgive dabbing Chica. Yeah. Oh god, I hate myself. But you see, I think there was one other massive. Ooh, I got that. Yeah, it's right here. Amongst the tales of Yay. The makeover robot edition in ball pit god, those drawings are just terrifying. That is absolutely worth our time exploring today. A lore reveal that introduces us to a character who's been helping to pull the strings since the very beginning. Who is one it? Who's been misleading us about the horrors of Fazbear oh, Entertainment. Man. Someone F4. whose importance goes far beyond just the 40 pages he appears in throughout this book. I think Into the Pit may have just introduced us to the creator of these games. And I'm not talking about Scott Cawkin. Let me explain. Oh, like you said in the past theory, but now he's... He's fixing it. Strangest inclusions in FNAF VR Help Wanted was a reference to a game designer that was telling lies about the horrors happening at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Yeah. Know that Fazbear Entertainment has developed oh man, FNAF Help Wanted, good times. Few decades. And while it's true that good times. Some stories associated with our name were loosely based on actual events, <laughs> the majority of them were total fabrications from the mind of a complete lunatic. Lawsuits pending. And yes, that sweet, sweet piece of man candy that you see there is oh, Scott boy, Coffin Scott. himself. Okay, fine, ha ha, funny joke there, Scott. I mean, this series likes to get self-aware. We're all familiar with that. And for a mainline title in the series, this one felt pretty extreme. Shameless self insert. And then you keep playing the game. What started as a one-off tongue-in-cheek joke actually becomes a critical piece of the lore. They lied to us. They lied to all of us. They told us that the whole point of this VR game was to undo the bad PR done by a rogue indie game developer who supposedly made up a bunch of crazy stories that tarnished the brand. But it doesn't stop there. There's more twists in FNAF VR than there Man, is in those the tapes. Shyamalan movie. That's a so freaking hired the game developer. Freaking confusing. Those indie games were designed to conceal and make light of what happened. This isn't just an attempt to rebrand. It's an elaborate cover-up. The whole thing starts with like, oh, this game designer is a joke. Psych. No, he's not. He's actually critical to the lore and is exposing the crimes happening at these restaurants. Booyah, fooled you again. He's actually the double of us, God. Actually settles on this Damn, Scott. Really like going at it. a game designer looking like Scott Coffin, hired by Fazbear Entertainment to make indie games, the games that we've all been playing well, up to this point, in order to misdirect us away from the real doesn't have to look like story. Scott. So, of course, I did an episode all about how Scott Coffin is the villain of FNAF. Let me rephrase what we just heard. 
Scott is one of the bad guys. October 3rd? It was that long ago? Holy crap. Pretty much everything we know from the first three, at least, but maybe even four, five, heck, six games could all be thrown out as complete fabrications created by Scott Coffin for the sole reason because he was paid off by Fazbear Entertainment. <sighs> Except I was wrong. Nothing new to be shown. Ah. Uh -huh. Sure, but Got it. <laughs> See, you guys See, yelling at me. It was all for nothing. That I uploaded that video, Scott made a post on Reddit saying that the oh. game developer from Hey Fantasy guys, look, I even talked about this in my reaction to that video. Quote, the question is this. Is Scott Coffin now a part of FNAF lore? The short answer is no. Yes, I use my own picture for this indie developer <clears> with an obvious parallel, but that Ugh. doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually me in universe. End quote. Yeah, Scott, you remain vague gotcha. and mysterious about the lore for years, half a decade at this point. And this, <laughs> this one little detail is the thing that you want to clarify. And you choose, you, you just choose to do it right before my video on this very topic. He can't but help it, he doesn't know you're making a vid. Theory gets everyone to dismiss all of the findings for that entire theory, since it's the one small detail that I get wrong and everyone focuses on. I don't have feelings about any of that at all. Scott continues, quote again. So no, man, I don't have feelings about that either. Developer that supposedly made it's not like I got yelled at. Actual events that may or may not be a cover up. Keep in mind that I do tend to use pictures of me and my family in the games, just because they're so readily available. In FNAF 4, I used a picture of a mountain range that I took while I was a truck driver in West Texas. I used a picture of a snowman that me and my older sons made together. I used a picture of a pet mockingbird that we nursed back to health one year. Do these have lore significance? Well, you probably already know the answer, end quote. Oh, I know the answer, Scott. And that answer is yes! My ever decreasing sanity aside, it does leave open the door. Scott's the pet mocking bird is canon. And I think that Fazbear Frights' story into the pit reveals to us who it might actually be. Admittedly, this is a bit looser of a theory, but I think it's one worth discussing. I believe our secret game designer, the one who's been lying to us through oh these boy. games, is the story's main character, Oswald. A little 10 year old boy who winds up in a time traveling ball pit to visit the 1985 murder scene of Freddy Fazbear. Interesting, interesting. I believe, he, I believe he grows up to be hired on by Fazbear Entertainment to create these games. Now, that might seem like a stretch for a character that we only get to know in the span of 40 pages, but I mean... holy Ballora, is there a lot of evidence in those 40 pages to back that assertion? Alright, let's see what Matt. story, Oswald is shown to be obsessed with animatronics for no apparent reason. Quote from the book He didn't know why. Lately, he'd been drawing mechanical animals, bears, bunnies, and I've read, I, I've read about this. This is the few moments that I actually remember reading. Sometimes he drew the animals exposed metal skeletons or sketched them with the fur peeled back. It was a creepy effect, like seeing a person's skull peeled out from beneath the skin. End quote. Now, mind you, this is without him ever, ever having a connection to animatronics. Heck, he doesn't have a connection to the pizzeria at this point in the story. He has never been there. <laughs> Nothing. This is just him naturally choosing to draw these oddly specific things without any outside references or influences. So already this boy seems to have himself a strange connection to the FNAF lore or is just a psychopath in training, but there's more. For such you don't know. <laughs> story, Into the Pit takes a lot of time to establish Oswald as a fan of video games, B grade Japanese movies and manga. A lot of time for a 40 page story. We hear about him listening to video game soundtracks. We witness the debates that he has with his father over cheesy Toho style Godzilla <laughs> How funny he finds the actor's lips not matching up with the dubbed in words in those sorts of movies. He visits the library and we hear about his enthusiasm for the latest manga installment. Now, the connection to video games is pretty obvious here, right? If he likes video games, well, there's he a likes chance that he games. to grow up to be a designer of video games himself. But it's his connection to old cheesy Japanese films and manga that really got my gears turning. Think back to Ultimate Custom Knife. At various point Oh no, I don't want to go back to these times. Each one <sighs> really inspired by those old, poorly dubbed Japanese samurai movies. The art style clearly riffing on classic anime and manga animations. The mysterious designer of the FNAF games, who presumably made Ultimate Custom Knife, would need to be a fan of this style of storytelling to want to incorporate it into his work. And here we have ourselves Oswald, a person who exists in this universe, whose limited characterization is spent establishing him as a fan of exactly this type of storytelling. Speaking of limited characterization, 
It's a minor connection. What? Numani? The story is how money strapped Ozzy and his family are. The reason he spends so much of his time in the library and the pizzeria is that they're both chief forms of entertainment during the day. Yeah, because his dad, when he's like, Ozzie yeah, go to Jeff's pizza, his dad's like, oh, we're not that poor that you can't get pizza. Again, I remember some stuff. As his story goes, Scott was oh, no, not Fifty Shades of Scott. That was, that's weird. As a Dollar General store clerk and working on his games at night with none of them going anywhere, many of mm. them being poorly received. The first Freddy's game was the one where all of his years of hard work and grinding finally paid off. There's obviously a lot more to that story, but suffice it to say, Oswald seems to be a character after Scott's own heart, coming from modest means, a fan of nerd culture. So to see Ozzy be the in-universe programmer of these games, to be Scott's literal in-universe stand-in for himself, well, it doesn't seem like that much of a stretch. Okay. Anyway, saying our designer was this kid <laughs> who draws spooky animatronics, comes from a low to modest income family, a story similar to Scott, and likes the video games and anime is still a bit of a stretch, right? Describes a little, like a little. Of kids. Okay, well, maybe not all kids have a psychic connection with a decades-old murder restaurant, but the rest of it, yeah. sure, pretty generic. I've been in a time-traveling <laughs> ball pit. Oswald's character traits here. If you look at Ozzy's experience with the bad <laughs> restaurant in the story, you could see where oh, he's baby. to include <laughs> game elements. Hey, guys, what's up? Game. The first and most obvious is Jeff. The current owner oh, of Jeff God. Street, the pizzeria Jeff. took over the abandoned Freddy Fazbear. <laughs> what happened to you, man? He's described in the book like this. Quote, Jeff was creepy too. He looked a hundred years old, but was probably just 30. With those heavy-lidded bloodshot eyes, the stained apron... It's one thing to read about descriptions. Like it's another to actually see them. Slow movement, bloodshot uh. eyes. Zombie pizza chef with a red stained apron. It sounds like it could very well be the inspiration behind an undead murderer in a pizzeria who refuses to die. Is that Afton? Ah, hey. What's up? That haunts the streets of the town. Remember, the game designer hired on by Fazbear Entertainment was tasked to lie about and make light of the murders in the Freddy restaurant. You so right, what you we right. see in the games would likely be a mix of reality and fiction. Oswald could very well be pulling from his real life experiences. I mean, the I mean that of does Oswald encounters also have themselves does explain some stuff some sci-fi stuff in FNAF is named Mike a Mike who outright says this quote you know when I was little I loved Freddy Fazbear's band I even had a stuffed Freddy I used to sleep with end quote wee -wee -wee -wee. oh really you don't say so Mike a eh? Goes off anytime someone makes a passing reference to FNAF 4. In that same <laughs> conversation, Mike also reveals that he has himself a sister. Oh, really? You don't say so, Mike. And then they also Jeez. talk about how creepy clowns and dolls are. <laughs> Apologies, that's my other alarm. That sounded like the it music. Anyway, it doesn't seem to be Mike Afton or Mike Emily. <laughs> you can bet I checked into that one. But these conversations was, is, was that supposed to be a paper please setting? <laughs> that looked a lot like papers please. And loves the Freddy Fazbear franchise. Who has himself a favorite Freddy plush? Who has a sister who loves dolls and becomes a really creepy clown doll hybrid who commands an army of dolls herself. Later in the book, Oswald meets a girl named Gabrielle, who loves Greek myth and gives him the courage to fight back against Golden Bonnie. Gabrielle is a very random character, but one with, again, a very... Mm, Gabriel. One that is, uh. once again, shockingly similar to one of the kids that we find on our gravestone, Gabriel. Even the theme of this short story could have inspired Oswald's games. You see, after Oswald uncovers the 1985 murders, his dad gets sucked into the time travel pit by Golden Bonnie. Dad! Sucked in no place. Suddenly, oh. everywhere his dad should be, Ozzy instead sees the silent, staring Golden Bonnie. Oh, that's freaking creepy. Can you imagine that happening in like real life? Everyone Jesus. Else just sees his father like normal. Actually, a really creepy, disturbing piece of imagery. Yeah. That gets Ozzy to question his right. sanity, but it's also one that directly ties back to the core motif of the game. A father, William Afton, becoming a golden bunny to terrorize kids, including his own son. A son who then has to go out, seek, and ultimately rescue his father in order to end the I'm nightmare. Going to and then you just have you. random lines inserted into the story that kind of fit, but kind of don't, but are also oddly specific to key moments throughout the FNAF franchise, like this. Quote, every day you toss me out on the street like garbage. End quote. Which are reminiscent of the FNAF 6 salvage minigames, with animatronics literally being thrown out on the street. This line, as Ozzy says it in the context of the scene, is 
kind of awkward, but if you're looking at it through the lens of, hey, this is actually a lore connection back to the games, now all of a sudden, it fits perfectly. There are just so many details that line up between Oswald's character, Interesting. the he meets, and the things that he goes through that line up with someone who could have made the FNAF games, who could have concocted parts and pieces of this story. Even motive-wise, it makes sense. Maybe Fazbear hires him on because they know he knows the truth, and it's to get him to shut up. Maybe Ozzy accepts the money because A, he's poor, and B, he's scared. He knows what they can do to him. Mm. I mean, will any of this ever come into play in any way, shape, or form? Unclear? Probably not. But one, it actually may be able to help us better separate out the truth from the fiction in the early games of this franchise. Like knowing zombie people were inspired by Jeff, the owner of Jeff's Pizzeria. The every, zombie every time I see his face, all uh. of that information off the table and really let us focus in on what truly matters a specific subset of murders. But even if it doesn't do anything grandiose like that, too, I wouldn't be surprised if we end up seeing Oswald again at some point. I mean, already there's a new teaser for the next installment of Fetch, the Fetch, Fight, Fetch, Fetch. Up on Scott's website. <laughs> Probably we do, do that preview more soon about this series and its connections with the games in the coming months. Oh but boy, that's just of course, theory. My... <laughs> theory. damn it. Huh? Well, I wouldn't. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually gonna let this play out because uh, god, that stream was incredible. Um, I, I won't say it's a complete stretch. This theory, it is interesting. Um, like I said, I still have not finished reading Into the Pit, um, so I, I, I don't know all of the details that Matt has been throwing out, but I will say it definitely is interesting nonetheless. Yeah, it, it definitely is interesting nonetheless. I really, really should get around to um to, to reading this, because it will make, it, it will allow me to understand these theories so much, so much better. Um, so yeah, I gotta get around to that. Um, but as for the actual theory, again, I don't think it was that bad. It's very, very interesting to think about. Um, and I love. I would love to see Scott's reaction to this. God, can, can you imagine if Scott to like a reaction channel? I would love to know like his opinion on this. Because Matt did connect Oswald with Scott. So I would love to know whether or not Scott really does think that Oswald is like the, um, <clears throat> the in-game or like in-book version of himself. I think that's very interesting and I would love to know Scott's opinion on that. Yeah, that's really all I have to say. It's interesting, it's not bad. Again, uh, as with all of <laughs> uh, FNAF theories and Matt's theories, there are a few plot holes here and there and I was very, very intrigued to note um, on whether or not Matt was going to fill in some of those plot holes that he mentioned in the last video. Um, but I guess I guess he didn't. He he did say he needs time to think about those. So maybe in the next game theory FNAF video he'll he'll address those. But I don't know. He may just leave them there and not address them. That's that's probably what he's gonna do. So it seems like, and I I really don't know how to think about this. Um, but it seems like Matt really is leaning more towards, um, looking at the books, um, and not the games anymore. Cause like FNAF AR has come out. And in the last theory, he mentioned that he should probably do a game theory on it, but he hasn't. And yet he's done two book theories, and it seems like he's going to do more of them when Fetch comes out. And th that just, that's very interesting to me. The fact that he's moving away from the games and going towards the books more, that's something to take note of. Anyways, I think that's it. Um, don't need to drag this out for any longer than it has to, so I'm just going to leave that there. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and I guess I'll see you all in the next few months with the next FNAF game theory. So, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye!